Now, this genuinely surprised me. When I saw this headline, I saw Draytech warns of remote code execution bug in Vigor routers. If you don't know what this is, Draytech is a Taiwanese company that makes Soho routers, pretty traditional stuff. And this is their line of Vigor routers. They have a different, a whole bunch of different routers you can look at, you know, not a ton to talk about here. They all kind of look like this. So when I saw this headline, I'm like, oh, it's another vulnerability in a Soho router. What else is new? If you're not aware, the world of Soho routers have basically been a laughing stock since the beginning of time. This little nugget here, a bug from 2016, if you can read this, uh, basically this bug from 2016 was in Netgear routers and all you had to do was put slash CGI bin and then colon a command and you got to run whatever command you wanted on a Netgear router. Not a great place to be if you're literally the front line of defense for someone's home network. Now, what made this interesting to me is this is not your traditional command injection buffer overflow garbage that we see in the world of Soho routers, okay? This one is actually very interesting and the path to exploiting it is much more complicated than I'm used to for the world of Soho routers, okay? This is a use of an uninitialized variable in these lines of Draytech routers. Uh, obviously there are a lot of them, so you know, not, not great. But what this allows an attacker to do, according to the researcher, is do what is called an arbitrary free, which enables remote code execution. So we're not doing buffer overflows here. We're not, you know, making the stack pointer get overflown and the return address over, over, you know, overwritten and, you know, doing evil stuff. This is simply an uninitialized variable let me explain what that means. If you've ever coded in C, which I teach on the Level Academy, by the way, um, <laughs> there is this practice in C coding that is called uninitialized variables, right? Basically here, we are defining a pointer whose name is P. It is a void pointer, meaning it points to no type at that time. And right now it has no value. Now to the lay person, you may be like, oh, who cares if there's no value? Like that just means that it points to nothing, right? It's not actually correct. The way that memory works under the hood in C is that this pointer P in this function stack frame for function B will share a slot with another function when it gets ran, function A for example. So because int x in this function is getting written to by scanf, the, the function used to get input from the user, I'm putting a variable inside of int x that will sit in the stack frame such that when function B gets ran, there will actually be a value set for the void pointer. I get to control the value of this variable by controlling the value of this variable. It's literally under the hood C memory management black magic, okay? Let's actually demo this real quick. So what I'm gonna show you is, first of all, if you're like kind of more experienced, you may see there's a lot of optimization I have to do to get this to work. This is a very uh, niche use case. This whole demo is called undefined behavior. So for me to get it to work properly, I have to kind of like force the compiler to do it. Um, but this is possible to happen in the real world. It's just a little more nuanced. If I compile this and I run it, um, what you'll see is I can put a number, I'm reading in a number into that integer x uh, through scanf, one, two, three, four. And then what it'll read in is one, two, three, four, which it has a hex value of four, two D. And then in function B, it prints to me the value of pointer P, which has the same value as my integer. Because those two stack frames share that location, I can control one variable with the other. Now, why does this matter? Why does this matter for an attacker? Well, the reason is really interesting. So the researcher Maze uh, told Bleepy Computer that this bug can be used uh, via an uninitialized stack variable to cause a free function to operate on an arbitrary memory location. This is known as an arbitrary free. So again, if you are in the world of maybe not so familiar with you know, how C works, when you are coding in C and you wanna get memory from the allocator or give memory back to the allocator, you have to call the functions malloc and free. These are memory allocator functions and freeing functions. The reason why we do this, by the way, is there are these structures inside of the heap that allow us to track what memory is being used and is not being used. So the way that it's organized, and I'm using Azaria Labs as uh, diagrams here because she has very good diagrams. If you're not aware of Azaria Labs, she has great courses, great material, go check her out. Um, but the way that this stuff all works is under the hood, when you have a piece of memory, you allocate it, right? You call malloc and you get that memory from the allocator and you can do what you want with it. And then when you give it back to the allocator, you call free on it, what happens is the allocator has to track other adjacent nodes that are free to be used, it's called a free list, and metadata about that free list gets put into that chunk. It overwrites the contents with pointers of the program. Now the issue with this 
is if you can trick the heap into accidentally accepting a chunk twice into a free list, if you can corrupt the metadata inside that free list, if you can change any of this information, you can get the heap to return arbitrary pointers. And you can use that as an arbitrary write mechanic. Now that, that how you use that is up to the, the environment that you're in, right? And what mitigations are in place. Um, but the ability to arbitrarily free something is extremely dangerous from an attacker perspective. Now, I will be totally honest, the world of heap exploitation is still something that I personally struggle with. Every time I have to do a heap exploit, I have to go read the documentation. Uh, one resource that I like very, very a lot, good, I can't speak today, uh, is uh, Shellfish's How to Heap. Basically, it's a table with a bunch of example code of, you know, the different, they call them houses in some cases, but basically the proof of concept about how you can exploit different parts of the heap, depending on the primitive you have. And a, a good one to show here is this thing called the House of Spirit. Basically, if you control the memory at the location that you're trying to free, you can have the allocator return that address as a malloc chunk. I know I said a lot of words there, but basically by being able to arbitrarily control the pointer that is being freed, you can get the allocator to return an address that you specify, right? Which is a big deal because you can turn that uninitialized variable, you know, which is a very, very easy bug to create, very simple issue to have. You can turn this via free into an arbitrary right, which is absolutely insane. That is completely, that is just a crazy place to be. Some of these are like totally bonkers, like a uh, fast bin dupe, tricking malloc into returning an already allocated heat pointer by abusing the fast bin free list, or house of lore, tricking malloc into returning a nearly arbitrary pointer by abusing the small bin free list, or one of my favorite house of force, exploiting the top chunk wilderness header in order to get malloc to return a nearly arbitrary pointer. What I find so interesting here, guys, is that normally in the world of Soho routers, I've looked at a few. It's kind of my fun little, my little hobby spot. I like these things. They're, they're kind of fun to mess with. You get the hardware and the software going on at the same time. The, the tradition, it seems, in these, uh, these devices is just to like have buffer overflows or to have command injections. I'm actually working on a video about a bug that I found in a similar device. It's a command injection, very trivial to, to exploit. So to see a vulnerability in a device like this that actually requires knowledge of the heap and to like exploit the heap via a modern practice, like an arbitrary free is really, really cool. It's just, it just shows that like, hey, hey guys, maybe, maybe software is getting a little more secure. And uh, yeah, of course, to answer your question, would Rust have solved this? Yes, actually, the, you cannot have, first of all, raw pointers and, and safe Rust. Uh, and two, the uh, ability to have uninitialized variables is literally like one of the entire purposes of the Rust compile checks, so the, you know, the ability to have the borrow checker and stuff. So, so yes, would it, Rust would have fixed this, yes, but also obviously organizationally getting any code base to be completely from one language to another is not gonna happen anytime soon. So. That's it guys, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you like this stuff, by the way, leave me a comment and say, I like this. And then um, go check out Stack Smash, which is our community where we talk about hacking stuff like this. You can join the waitlist down in the comments below. Okay, see you guys later, bye-bye.